the first uh, TEDx talk, and I thought rather discussing about hacking, it's always uh, good to discuss about the journey of mine from a cyber victim to a cyber expert. So a very interesting thing has happened into my life. The two incidents have changed my life completely. I was a very shy and introvert, you know, kind of a person when I was to be, you know, 10 and 11 years old. At that point of time, I, I used to spend my 90% of the time, you know, in my room. I don't used to meet friends. What I only used to do is I just used to watch TV or just watch cricket or, you know, play some video games also. One day, my father brought a video camera to shoot some special occasions. When he brought the video camera, you know, since that day, I started getting dream that how do I utilize this video camera apart from this particular shooting some special occasions. So what I used to do with the video camera, I used to connect the audio video cable of that video camera with my TV, and I used to see myself live in front of a video camera at the age of 10 and 11, and I used to, you know, start reading the newspaper in front of a video camera. I used to read my textbook in front of a video camera. Initially, my parents, you know, find it so funny that why Sunny is doing this. But later, my mother realized that if we want to make Sunny study also, let's do one thing, you know, start the camera and Sunny will start studying and he'll give all the answers also. Later, what I used to do is, you know, I used to capture the video, edit the video, and I used to, you know, watch that videos again and again before the examination. That was improving my results also. And that has become a very good practice, you know. Like whenever my mom wanted to say, Sunny, you know, please go and study, she used to just on the video camera connect it to the TV and make me sit in front of a camera. That is the one incident that happened in my life. And the second incident, when I was in my 11th standard, I just opened one of my Yahoo mailbox and there was one very good email which was there in my email box from the customer care department of yahoo.com. The email ID was customer care. The subject line was very interesting. Please verify your email account. Otherwise, your email will be blocked in next 48 hours. So I thought if I would not verify my email account, then my account may be blocked in next 48 hours. They have written in the email, dear Sunny, yesterday we found that your account has already been compromised by somebody else on the internet, and somebody has accessed your account from this IP address. So we wanted to secure your account you know, and move the data of your account from the less secure server to some more secure server. But Sunny, in order to do that, there is a link given in the email below. Click on this link and give your ID and the password for the verification. I was in my 11th grade. I clicked on the link. I saw a page of the Yahoo with the logo of the Yahoo, you know, written on the website, password verification engine. There were two input fields were there. One is your username, second is a password. License agreement with I agree, I do not agree, and a CAPTCHA was there. So I gave my ID, gave my password, and whenever you see a license agreement, we always press one checkbox, that is I agree. And finally, I press submit button with the thinking in the mind that thanks to Yahoo, that there are millions and millions number of people registered on the Yahoo, but still they actually have a worry about one small kid's Yahoo account also. The next day I was not able to open my email account. And when I was not able to open my email account, I tried my ID password combinations which I've been using for years and years for so long, and finally I, I was not able to log in, so I ended up calling one of my friend and I actually asked him, hey, what has happened to me, you know? I mean, what has happened to my Yahoo email account? Yesterday I did verify my email account and today I'm not able to open the email account. He said, Sunny, you are a victim of one of the attack in the hacking known as a phishing. So at a very first you know, time in my life, I've heard the word which is something known as phishing and hacking. And when I heard this word, that somebody can create a fake website also, somebody can just send fake email also, and can make somebody a victim also, I said, hey, I also want to make my girlfriend a victim, I also want to make my friends a victim, tell me how do I do that? He said, Sunny, you need to learn hacking. I said, what are the ways of learning hacking? He said, Sunny, there is an Indian author who has written so many books on the hacking. You are also Gujarati, he's also Gujarati. You know, please read that other Gujarati guy's book. I read almost all the books, but books are found to be nothing in terms of implementing hacking. There were so many methods, but nothing was working on the computer. The technologies are running very fast in India and nowadays, and that is the reason the books cannot make you a hacker. So I started my career, yes, I can say that I started my career from the underground community as a blackhead guy, and slowly and gradually turn into this particular whitehead guy. But again, one of the tragedy happened to me. In the 12th grade, I got a good score, and my parents forced me to take an admission into the electronics and communication branch into one of the university, but I was not a man of electronics, I was a man of computers. 
on a very first day, one of the subject was introduced that you need to deliver some seminar on curricular or extracurricular topic, and Sunny has chosen the topic that is computer hacking. The topic was given to me, 20 days were given to me, and I promise in front of 120 people in my branch that, madam, my seminar is going to be the best out of all the seminars, but how do I do that? So I went back home, I created a Yahoo group, second day I passed on the paper in the class, noted down everybody's email ID, and I sent an invitation to all to join that particular Yahoo group. But what is the connection between seminar and the Yahoo group? So my motive behind creating this particular Yahoo group is not to share any knowledge using this Yahoo group, but my motive behind creating this Yahoo group is to hack into 120 students of the electronics and communication branch using this Yahoo group. But how do I do that? So the same thing I have done. I started sending some random emails, and the 13th email was very interesting in that Yahoo group. The 13th email was secret procedure of hacking into anybody's Yahoo email account. You can also hack anybody's Yahoo email account. And in the content, what I have written, dear friends, please follow the following procedure given by my one of the friend who is working in this Yahoo company at this particular city and this particular state and this particular designation. I know that nobody is going to verify the same. And he has given me some secret procedure with the link of the secret database of the Yahoo, which Yahoo people are using for the business continuity operation during the disaster recovery operation. Itne bade bade word use kiye the that nobody can understand that. But whenever the person is going to click on that, they were going to you know my website and not the original Yahoo website. I created a fake website with the logo of Yahoo written on the website, password retrieval engine. Instead of two input fields, I have given them three input fields. One is your username, second is a password, complainant's username, I agree, I do not agree, license agreement, CAPTCHA. I went to HDFC Banker website to copy the logo which is very signed secured so that people have a feeling that the site is 100% secured. And finally, you know, the seminar day has come. I opened my website just to check how many really good number of victims are studying in my branch out of 120 people, and I was very much surprised to know this that the total number of people who are studying in my branch are 120, and out of 120, almost 20 people have given their ID password. So what I've done was, I've separated only those people who were showing very extra attitude or the ultra attitude in my branch, and finally after separating those five to six people, I started the seminar in front of 120 people. After the seminar of 15 minutes, I said thank you, thanks a lot. My friend has, you know, claimed, Sunny, this is not a best seminar. Whatever you are explaining that is available on the Wikipedia, what is best about it? I said, brother, I'm going to show you a demonstration. Right, may I know your email ID? He said, this is my email ID. And you know what I've done? Just the day before I printed those five, six people's email ID and all 12, 30 people's email ID on that particular paper, and I kept that paper nearby my laptop, and my luck was with me because Mr. Paryant was there in that particular paper. And finally, what I've done, I said, you know, I can show you something. I opened the command prompt and I showed a complete black screen on the projector because we have a mentality set in our mind that hackers are always work with a black screen. So until and unless you don't show the black screen to the people, people won't get, won't get a feel of hacking. I started writing some fake commands in that command prompt and finally I entered this write ID and write password in the telnet which is an authentication command and press enter after five minutes and it was showing authentication successful. I was successfully logged into that particular guy's email account and finally after that guys, some girl also came to me and I finally hacked into that girl's account also. But that seminar has changed my particular life and this incident has changed my life because my name has been changed in the college in a very first year, in the very first semester from somebody known as Sunny Vaghela to somebody known as Sunny Hacker. I was given a very beautiful last name which is a hacker and I was really proud of it because nobody used to stare at the director of the college but everybody who used to stare at the hacker of the college the next day you enter the class, girls used to come to me and say, hey, shall we go for a lunch? Would you like to have a tea or a coffee? Right, the answer was very simple, that Sunny was the hacker. And at the end of the day, people used to come to me with a random request, hey Sunny, our university is a private university, can you hack into our, you know, like faculty's email ID to get the papers also? And I always used to make one or the other reasons, but always used to enjoy that celebrity status as a hacker I was used to get in that particular college. The first semester got over. The second semester got started. Now, in the second semester, people, you know, stopped noticing me. People stopped talking to me. The girl who was offering me a coffee is now not offering me a water also. Now, what should I do, you know? 
So I was not liking that normal status which I used to get into the college, and that was pushing me to do something different in the college apart from all the people who are studying in the college. So I was actually having all the electronics members in my family. I took an idea and I developed one of these systems you know, using a voice recognition and using the SMS, you can control anything also. You can control your car also, you can control your AC also, and you can control anything in this world also. I'm talking about 2005 when I was in my first year of the engineering. And when I developed this particular system, the luck was with me that one of the biggest dam was getting inaugurated by the chief minister of Gujarat, and he has actually, you know, asked for some robotic to open that particular dam of the, you know, you can say that, you know, open the doors of that particular dam. But finally, my university supplied my system and I got featured into the newspapers. And when I got featured as a second you know, semester student in the newspaper, second day you again enter the class and the same girl will come and say, hey, my mom has made parathas for you. Would you like to have it? And you really enjoy that particular environment that is created for you in the college. Again, the third semester started. And again, you know, people stopped noticing me. I always used to feel, you know, like yeah, my newspaper articles and my things has to be there on all the notice boards on the, in the college. But my college has a you know, like policy that they can only keep it for two months, they cannot keep it for three months or the four months also. So I'll have to do everything, you know, every new things you know, again and again. One day, what I was thinking is that why can't I change this SMS control system and connect it to a web so that using the website you know, or using the free SMS website, I can control the complete home also. When I was doing this, I found one of the very major vulnerability in one of the very you know, major or you can say the famous free SMS website. And when I hacked into that website, what I actually realized is that this website is connecting to some server which is of a mobile network and this particular website is sending some sender ID in that website. Like you send an SMS from 160 by 2, you get a 160 by 2. But what I was doing using that website, I used to manipulate that 160 by 2 and keep my director's number in that you know, 160 by 2 and used to send an SMS to all my friends, but whenever they used to get an SMS, they see that, that the director is messaging that tomorrow is a holiday in the college and there's no need to come into the college. I always used to so use this technology you know, to, you can say, to have a fun with people, you know, just to you know, solve the relationship problems also. But again, you know, after this particular third semester, people, you know, like when you come to fourth semester, they stop noticing you because your articles are not there in the notice period. It is not there in the news also, and you are a normal person. You never would like to get treated as a normal person. You always would like to get a status. And what I was actually doing one day, I was calling my, you know, sister in the USA using one of the free VOIP software, or you can say that Skype. Now, when I was actually calling using a Skype or a VOIP, I thought that this particular software must be having a number or must be having a field stored into the software. If I would crack the software, I would be able to change the number or, or yeah, I would be able to change the caller ID in that particular software also. And I did the same. I learned reverse engineering and I reversed the whole software. And what I did was that whatever software is communicating to the server, I was changing a caller ID and whatever I used to do in the SMS forging is now working into the call forging and I was able to make calls to any particular number in India and across the globe from any number of your choice. So today if I would like to you know, declare a war, I could have called from Manmohan Singh's number to Musharraf's number saying that I'm actually doing a war on you and that would actually be a breach of protocol also. The vulnerability of SMS forging and the you know, call forging was reported to the telecom department the telecom department and a lot of media people, they made a big show for two days. But you know, for me, the two days were not important. For me, what was important is that after two days when you're going to enter the college, Sunny, people are going to treat you like anything, you know? And the, you know, what I did was, you know, whatever t-shirt and whatever blazer that I wore in this particular thing, I wore the same blazer and entered that particular college so that people can recognize me by seeing me also. <laughs> The moment you enter the college, you see that even your videos are running across the college. Your faculties are saying that today we have a holiday where Sunny is going to discuss about what Sunny has actually done. And I was really enjoying the environment that was created for me. But again, the fifth semester came. And again, you started getting noticed as a normal person, as a normal student, right? You never would like to get treated as a normal person. One day, my friend came to me, was like, Sunny, one of the contestants was participating in the MTV Rodez is having one of the application in the orco.com in 2006 
and this orco.com is having application, can you increase the votes of that particular contestant? But when he actually said orco.com, something was striking into my mind that Sunny, if you want to make another big news, you need to hack Orkut. And what I did was, after the sleepless nights for almost 20 days, I found one of the major vulnerability into the Orkut, which was a session hijacking, and I was able to hijack the session of any Orkut user, and I was able to access any Orkut user without ID and even without a password also. So I can able to access anybody's account without ID and without password. I reported a problem, you know, got a response, and when I got a response, a lot of media houses came to me and again started asking me, Sunny, would you like to, you know, give us an interview? And Sunny was always eagerly waiting for that because it's not about interview, it's about the call it thing that people should know that I'm doing something different and the girl should offer me not only parathas but the full meal also or maybe, you know, ask me for to come for a dinner or a date also, you know. Now coming back to this, you know, I hacked into the awkward and when I hacked into the awkward, the very interesting thing has happened. It's not just the college, it's not just my relatives, it's not just my friends who were giving me a good status. But on the second day when I opened my Orkut account, I saw that I'm getting an invitation to join my fan page on the Orkut, and almost 2,000 people have already joined that, and the discussion was going on, hey, Sunny sir, please let us know how to hack Orkut, you know? And I was getting hundreds and thousands of scraps in my Orkut account saying that, hey, tell us how to hack Orkut. But when you are getting that sir wala tag in the fifth semester of your, you know, college, you really feel proud to have it. And finally, you know, I thought, okay, hacking is a one field which I wanted to choose. I'm not going to do, do anything in my life, and this is the thing which I'm actually going to pursue for the whole of my life. Finally, the sixth semester came, and end of the fifth semester, I got a call from the, you know, police department. I said, what, what wrong did I do, you know? Like showing a vulnerability of Orkut, you know, on a news channel, is it a crime? Well, you know, that is not a crime, but Mr. Vagela, we have so many cases which are pending, and these cases are of Orkut, right? So many people have made a fake profile impersonating somebody on Orkut, and we didn't know that. Okay, Ahmedabad has an Orkut hacker available in Ahmedabad. Please come and visit us. The commissioner invited me. Second day, I started working with the crime branch in the third year of my engineering, and I decided to do only one thing, to make a difference in the society by solving the maximum number of crimes, and I decided to solve the maximum number of crimes for whichever time I have given. And what I've done was, in one day, I used to solve three cases. I've been given a lot of cases by this particular people, and a one fine day is coming after three months that I've been getting calls from, you know, like some of the organizations saying that, that across India, the number of cyber crimes are happening, Mr. Vagila, you've solved the highest number of the crimes. And at the end of the day, you're getting invitation also to, you know, come for the national level award. And I was been awarded as the IT expert of the state of Gujarat when I was in my third year of the engineering at the age of only 20.